So this thing may look like an ordinary power bank with all of its USB inputs and outputs. But if we take a closer look at the label on the front, it is clear that this is something special. Because yes, this power bank can output 100 watts of power, which is enough to fully illuminate this super bright 100 watt high power LED. Outputting so much power with such a small power bank is pretty crazy when you think about it. Because in theory you could partly power a PlayStation 5 with it or even my workhorse computer. Even laptops can be charged and solely powered by such power banks. And this is of course all possible because of the USB-C connector and all of its standardized protocols like PD aka power delivery. With it you can get 20 volts from the power bank which multiplied by the maximum current of 5 amps equals our 100 watts. So far this all sounds fantastic but a small problem arises when you look at the capacity of this power bank which is 74 watt hours. If you divide that capacity by 100 watts then this power bank is empty within around 45 minutes which is not very long and it could only charge up a modern laptop battery around one point something times. So what we need is a bigger battery and luckily I recently found this purple PCB on AliExpress which according to its description could help us to create a DIY power bank with hopefully more capacity and still a 100 watt output. And that of course brings us to the age old question whether we should DIY or buy such a 100 watt power bank. And hopefully at the end of this video we will have a clear answer. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Onshape which is the CAD software I use for this project to design the enclosure for my DIY power bank. And the best news first, this CAD software is free to use for anyone and has plans specifically designed for businesses as well. And since it runs in pretty much any modern web browser and works like Google Drive, you can use this software on almost all devices, no joke. Of course, it also comes with all the design features you would expect from such a professional software. And after just a couple of minutes of using it, I was comfortable with it and thus created my power bank design within an hour. So if you want to give it a try, go to onshape.pro slash greatscots or click the link in the video description. Now before starting anything with the PCB, I firstly of course had a closer look at it. And I have to say that the quality is pretty good. Its main IC is the IP2368, which according to what I can decipher from its Chinese datasheet, as well as the product description of the PCB, cannot only do all the USB-C communication, but it also manages the power electronics. In our case, those are mainly 4 N-channel MOSFETs and one big inductor, which together form an H-bridge synchronous buck boost converter. Sounds complicated, but in a nutshell, such a converter takes the battery voltage and either steps it up or down to reach the 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts, which USB-C is known for. For each voltage level, the converter also comes with a maximum current rating. And here I'm honestly most curious about the 20 volts 5 amp one. So what the PCB can output is clear. But what about the input side with the batteries? Well, according to the product description, you can set all the important battery pack parameters by using different resistor values for resistors that can be easily soldered to the PCB. Those parameters include the battery chemistry, how many battery cells you want to use in series, what capacity your pack comes with and what charging end voltage it requires. And if we for example calculate with the maximum ratings, then we could use a battery pack with 25 amp hours and a nominal voltage of 22.2 volts, which is 555 watt hours in total. And that is 7.5 times more capacity than the buy version. Not bad. 
In my practical case though, I ordered myself those 18650 lithium ion cells from LG, which come with a capacity of 3.2 amp hours and can output 10 amps each. I will be putting two of them in parallel to double their output in capacity to 20 amps and 6.4 amp hours and four of those pairs in series in order to increase the voltage to 14.8 volts. This way the final pack should be able to output 296 watts, which is more than enough and it will come with a capacity of 95 watt hours, which is a step up from the buy version. And best of all, the standard resistor values of the PCB pretty much represent all the parameters of my battery pack. The only thing missing was the charging current, which for my pack could be at max around 6.2 amps. Only problem was that the product description didn't mention the charging current at all and I had to investigate the Chinese datasheet with Google Translate in order to find out that the board was in fact in the constant current charging modes and the charging current is set by this resistor that is 27 kilo ohm and thus sets the current to 5 amps which is suitable for my pack. And with that out of the way, all the input and output theory was finally done and I moved on to soldering a plus and minus wire to the board and connect it to my lab bench power supply set to the battery voltage to do some initial tests. And at first, the board was not in the mood to deliver any output voltage. And to solve that, I first had to hook up a power source so that the yet not existing battery pack gets initially charged and thus recognized. With that being done, I was able to activate all the different voltage levels we talked about. And next, I lowered the input voltage for the boards to see how the battery level monitor LEDs would react, but they apparently didn't care at all. What I found out is that the IC utilizes a fuel gauge monitor, meaning it only determines the initial battery charge through the startup voltage and then simply measures how much power is going in and out to light up more or less battery level LEDs. And of course, all of that is in accordance with the set capacity of the battery pack. I properly tested this later and this feature seems to work just fine. So next, I did the 100 watt power test with my constant load to see if that actually works. And as it turns out, the output voltage does drop a bit too much while drawing 5 amps. At 4.6 amps however, the voltage is still acceptable and I guess 90 watts of power is still pretty good for such a board that doesn't even get hot while pushing that much power, meaning I could touch all the components without getting burned and we need no additional cooling. And while I was already doing current tests, I tested out a bunch of different current flows at different voltage levels while writing down the inputs and output power. And as it turns out, the max current at the different voltage levels was always possible and according to this efficiency graph, you can see that the board is also quite efficient. So last but not least, I lowered the simulated battery pack voltage to see if the PCB would cut off its output power to prevent an over discharge, which it did at 11.5 volts, so 2.9 volts per cell, which fits just fine. Okay, with all the output testing done, it was finally time to create the actual battery pack, for which I only needed an additional spot welder and a couple of smaller nickel strips. I used them to firstly create the parallel connections and after aligning all these cells correctly afterwards, I used them once again to create the series connections. I only cover this topic briefly here because I created such battery packs a few times in past videos so definitely check them out if you're looking for more information. And with the bare battery pack complete and outputting all the correct voltages, all that was missing was adding a BMS like this one right here, which adds over current, over voltage and under voltage protection and also balances the individual cells so that none gets overcharged. All I had to do was to mount it to the battery pack, solder the wires to the appropriate cells plug in the connector and add power wires to the pack and BMS. And after then connecting those power wires to the PCB, 
my DIY power bank was more or less complete. First off, I of course tested the charging capabilities and it seems to charge very fast by pumping 4.5 amps into the batteries. I of course also let the whole pack charge up completely in order to confirm that the PCB truly cuts off the charging at the correct voltage. And for the last tests, I once again tried some output loads, which all worked fine. And using the power bank to charge up more traditional electronics was also no problem. So all in all, this DIY almost 100 watt power bank is not half bad. And the only real criticism I got for it is that it only comes with one input and output port and that it is missing such a useful display the BI version comes with. But aside from that, it also got tons of good things going for it, which I summarized in this chart here. And the winner for me in this episode are actually both DIY and BI, because I think the BI version here really offers a good cost performance ratio. Now to finish off my DIY version though, I also designed a fitting enclosure for it, which I then 3D printed. And with all the electronics placed and screwed inside there snugly and closing it all up, my project came to an end. And I hope you enjoyed it and maybe now know a bit more about such 100 watt power banks. If so, consider supporting me through Patreon to keep the show going. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.